What's going on guys, Ben Glugin here coming back at you with another video and today we're going to be rebuilding the Pittsburgh Steelers. As you can see, I am finally in my apartment if this is the first video you've watched in a while. Uh, I finally made the move. I have a new setup. I finally have a PC now so I have no more uh, like technical difficulties. Hopefully, hopefully there are no growing pains. But I'm very excited nonetheless to rebuild this Pittsburgh Steelers team. Obviously, you guys are football fans. You know this. They lost their biggest stars over the past season Antonio Brown obviously locker room cancer you could say really terrible off the field uh, as well yet great player is on it it's a huge loss for the team Le'Veon Bell I know he didn't play last year he sat out the whole season for the Steelers but still a really really big piece to lose nonetheless and now Big Ben goes down with an injury seems like the team is banking on Mason Rudolph today we're going to be rebuilding them, seeing if maybe we can use Mason Rudolph or somebody else to lead this team through the promised land. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. But of course, this team also just made a big move. They traded away their first round pick for Minka Fitzpatrick. A good trade for them. Uh, Minka Fitzpatrick is definitely a first round caliber player. That's why he went in the first round. Uh, of course, the Dolphins took him. Very versatile player. Can play safety, can play slot corner, can play maybe even boundary corner. I think we're probably not going to play him in that role, but um, obviously you guys do not see the term realistic in the title. This is not a very hyper-realistic rebuild as some of the ones we've done on the channel. So that means injuries are off, which also means guys like Big Ben are going to be traded. Now I know it's Big Ben would never be traded in real life. He really wouldn't. This is a player that's going to be on the Steelers until the end of his career, but this is a rebuild without Big Ben. And instead of just cutting him, or letting him, you know, like sit on the on the bench or whatever. I'm going to trade him for whatever value I can extract from him um, at the moment. So even though Big Ben definitely would not want to be traded and would would say no, 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 do not do that. As we know, sometimes he just does what he wants anyway. So we're gonna do that, and we're gonna go ahead and trade him away. Uh, he's 37 years old, 83 overall, Superstar X-Factor. Should have some trade value at least, so I'll see what I can do uh, in order to do that. But Mason Rudolph is going to be the guy, former Oklahoma State QB. I'm a huge Texas Longhorns fan. Just got done watching uh, Texas versus Oklahoma State a couple hours ago. And, dude, Oak State fought back into that game. Very nerve-wracking. Yeah, not even that they fought back. Texas made so many unforced errors to almost blow the game. Um, but the offensive line is overall fairly good. Here's the problem with it. Alejandro Villanueva is 30. Ramon Foster is 33. Doesn't get all that much better with Marquise Pouncey, who is 30. We have three offensive linemen who are quite good for this team that are going to start regressing immediately. Now, David DeCastro is a monster. He's maybe, what, 28? He's still quite young, 29. Um, he's fine, and even though he's one year uh, younger, then Marquise Pouncey and Alejandro Villanueva, he's going to start regressing um, slower because of his higher overall and superstar development and younger age, so don't really need to worry about that. We do need to improve right tackle. It is still bewildering to me why the Steelers would trade away Marcus Gilbert for a sixth to the Cardinals. I don't really know why that would have happened, but Vance McDonald is certainly a decent tight end option. Xavier Grimble in there as well as Zach Gentry. Wide receiving core is kind of the weakest part of this offense, I would say, other than maybe QB, just Mason Rudolph is kind of an unknown. We got James Conner, Jalen Samuels, Benny Snell, Roosevelt Knicks, of course, at fullback. Um, board to see where we have Juju Smith-Schuster, James Washington, another Oklahoma State player. He's got that connection with Mason Rudolph. They got Ryan Switzer, who's not that good. Dante Moncrief, who's not particularly good. Deontay Johnson's a rookie out of Toledo. Kind of reminds me of Antonio Brown coming out. Obviously, that's not, like, I'm not comparing him to one of the best receivers we've seen in the past ever in Antonio Brown. Um, but I think he he has some similar traits, size, and ability. Really good route runner. Um, I can definitely see the Steelers wanting to draft him, thinking that this could be our next Antonio Brown. Kind of an unknown player to come out and to be good. So he's nice overall. We'll see if we can develop him over the course of this thing. On the defense side of the ball, we get Minka Fitzpatrick, of course. New addition to the team. Um, Terrell Edmonds. I don't know if they're allowed to retake pictures when the EA is getting these face scans, but good God, what is going on there? Nothing good. Linebacking core. Kind of sucks. Ryan Shazier, I don't think is ever going to play again. Um, so we're not going to use him in this. I know it kind of sucks. Like, obviously a really, really great player um, before injury, but 
unfortunately, he did get injured, and, you know, he's barely, he's back to walking a little bit, but I don't think there's even a chance he plays another snap in the NFL again, even if he'd want to. Um, so we're going to make him a punter so no other team can sign him. And then we get kind of a weird linebacking situation where we have Mark Barron getting a handful of snaps, although uh, clearly that's not what's going to happen as we're going to move Devin Bush up. And uh, we definitely want to start the first round pick of this team, number 10 overall, I believe, this past year. Bud Dupree has never really developed in anything, but TJ Watt is a beast, a superstar development. We'll look to develop him some more. Um, Sean Davis is going to be a free agent at the end of this year. We're going to trade whatever we can um, for value because they have a lot of aging pieces. Joe Hayden is another one of those guys who is 30 now. It's funny. I saw on uh, on Instagram the other day that somebody commented like, oh, imagine like taking Joe Hayden with a top five pick or whatever. It's like, do you not remember? First of all, Joe Hayden was a monster at Florida. And second of all, how old are you that you don't remember Joe Hayden being one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL for a handful of years before injury? Like, what are you, out of your mind? He was certainly worth the value. They just didn't put pieces around him. One, one cornerback is not going to do it all, even though he was locked down. But this CB group is really, really bad. Steven Nelson, not particularly good. Mike Hilton's a slot guy. Artie Burns was such a reach in the first round and has proven to be not even close to worth that value. Artie Burns is terrible. Now, Justin Lane, quite a nice player, might I add. Definitely someone I liked a lot. He was my number four CB in the draft. I loved him at Michigan State. I thought he's a really, really good player. I want to get him some action. So we're going to probably move him up quite a bit. Definitely going to be um, our third corner. Mike Hilton's going to stay in the slot, though. I think I'm going to get rid of Steven Nelson. Artie Burns is useless to me. And the defensive line is actually quite good. You got Cam Hayward is one of the most underrated players in football, although he is 30-ish as well, 30 years old. Javon Hargrave is pretty good. Star development also. Daniel McCullers, not too good. Tyson Alawalo is in here. Kind of forgot the Steelers had him. Um, another, I believe he was a first-round pick in 2012, maybe? By the Jaguars, of course. Was he? I want to say that he was. Former uh, Cal Bear. Say in awards? Yeah. Number 10 in 2010, not 2012. Um, and then, of course, at that left end spot we have Stefan to it so it's a 3-4 front and it's a good one might end up changing to a 4-3 you guys know with some of these rebuilds I love 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 to change up um the schemes but yeah I don't even know if I want to stick with Terrell Edmonds I just feel like the Steelers have been so hit or miss on their draft picks in the in the first round over the past 10 years it's either they're a great player or they're absolutely terrible look at Jarvis Jones um look at maybe Terrell Edmonds he's a little bit too early to see if he's going to be actually that bad or not. Maybe he should even become a linebacker. Um, but like his brother Tremaine, of course, another first round pick in that draft class by the Bills. And then like uh, like Bud Dupree is not particularly good. I have some apologists on like YouTube and stuff that think Bud Dupree is actually pretty good. He doesn't really do anything well is the problem. He's just so average and his cap hit is ridiculous. We just we got to get rid of some of these terrible contracts and older players. So um, sorry if you're going to see some of your favorite players get traded away. We need to free up some cap room. We need to get some younger players on the team. So guys like Big Ben Roethlisberger are gone. Guys like Joe Hayden are probably going to be gone. Maybe even Ramon Foster. I think certainly um, uh, Steven Nelson's gone. Although if, if that's anybody's favorite player other than Steven Nelson's mom, I'm going to be shocked. All right, so uh, two former first-round picks and Joe Hayden and Mark Barron are going to get me a first-round pick from the Washington Redskins. I know these are not the most re or realistic trades. That's not the, kind of the point of these videos. It's just going to see how good we can make these teams. Um, and the trade logic is quite flawed, I will admit. Also, I need to give the Dolphins the first-round pick uh, that was from the Minka Fitzpatrick trade. So I'm just going to trade for, like, you know, just some random on this team. Let's see here. Give me Tabor Pepper. Great trade for us. <laughs> She's like, what are you doing? It's like, yeah, I, I got to give it away anyway. The, the Steelers do not have that pick. We had a first round back anyway from the Redskins now, and that's going to be a higher pick than this one probably ends up being. Although I'm not sure how successful this team's going to be. It's going to be weird. I don't know if I want to try and compete this year or just kind of tank a little bit and then get better down the line. It'll be interesting. All right, this trade is kind of a weird one, admittedly, but Big Ben Roethlisberger, you know, thanks for the two Super Bowls in Pittsburgh. You got to go now. 37 years old, injured in real life. He's he's just gone. Steven Nelson, Bud Dupree, um, 
two first round picks involved in that one uh, as well so the Steelers have accumulated a lot of first round picks not all their own of course in these teams but um, the reason I'm getting Will Hernandez is I think Ramon Foster's gone 33 years old we need to upgrade up at the position anyway and then a first round pick from the Giants I mean even with Big Ben you imagine that the team's gonna be pretty bad so might as well pick up their first rounder second so far uh, second in the NFC East as well Okay, so interesting trade here. Uh, Ramon Foster, Vince Williams, and I had to add a 2024th to get this one done for Frank Ragnow. Uh, really young, really good center for the Detroit Lions, and it seems like we're doing a lot of weird things to get offensive linemen. However, um, we're, we're upgrading at these positions, even if it doesn't look like it. Will Hernandez is eventually going to pass an 82 overall over the course of this rebuild as Ramon Foster is going to go the other way, and then more keys pounce is going to go down. Frank Ragnow is going to go up. They will probably meet at the same overall after this year. For now, uh, I'm going to make some really fun, unrealistic moves, and that is move a center in Frank Ragnow to right tackle. I know, fun, right? So our offensive line, pretty good overall, I would say. Um, the only older player in here is, I guess, I guess two of them, Villanueva and Pouncey, both at 30. Other than that, I think we're going to be set. And I don't think I'm going to make any more trades. I think, I think I'm just going to move Deontay Johnson to number three. We're going to play him in the slot defensively. Tyler Matikiewicz is not good, but we're just going to look to the draft. We got Justin Lane, Artie Burns out here. Not a great three, but it's who we have. And then we'll, Deontay Johnson in the slot. Jalen Samuels is a third down running back. Probably not. Um... This is a fine pass rush. Mike Hilton on the slot. Devin Bush at sub linebacker. We're going to be good. I hope he wins defensive rookie of the year. I think we're going to have a good spot where Deontay Johnson's in at least a conversation for offensive rookie of the year. And I guess I will see you guys at the midseason mark. I would love some more picks. I have two first rounders. I'm looking at either wide receiver, quarterback. I know people want Mason Rudolph, but like, come on, dude. And then maybe like edge probably, or inside linebacker, cornerback, safety, one of those. Terrell Edmonds might be able to move inside if we get a safety. I think I think it's a decent team, though. I, I just don't know how successful we're going to be. At the midseason mark, we are 4-3. and three. That puts us currently, I guess, tied for second place in the AFC North. The Browns are going to dominate as they usually do. 38-17 uh, to 17 is almost too close of a game with the Dolphins, as you can see in the top left there. Mike Hilton is an impending free agent. Wish I would have known that. Maybe I would have tried to deal him. However, that's definitely a player I want to bring back. Shazier, Javon Hargrave, Sean Davis already burns in here as well. I don't know what we want to do with them. So in my opinion, already burns is not someone who has earned a long-term contract. I'm not going to bring him back. Sean Davis, not going to bring him back either. We did bring back Javon Hargrave. We did bring back Mike Hilton. Sorry, Shazier. Um, really great player, but it's a, it's a yikes for me. So we did not make the playoffs. That's a little unfortunate. Um, finished at 5, 10, and 1. Yikes. Checking out the stats. Mason Rudolph actually had a very, very good year. 4,200 passing yards, 26 touchdowns to 13 interceptions, rushing. James Conner, over 1,000 yards, 4.6 per carry, 9 touchdowns for him. Receiving, that's what I'm talking about. Put your receivers in the slot, man. They're going to get a ton of targets. Deontay Johnson, 67 catches for over 1,000 yards, 4 touchdowns. Juju Smith-Schuster was close to 1,000 yards, 6 TDs. James Washington had 8 touchdowns on 90 catches. He was targeted a, a lot. Oh, my goodness. As far as sacks goes, I did not click the X button. I don't know why that's been happening lately. Um, maybe my controller's broken. Alejandro Villanueva allowed 22 sacks. Pretty unbelievable, actually. Tyler Matakiewicz led the team in tackles with 109. Okay. Tackles for loss, 14 for TJ Watt. Cam Hayward, Javon Hargrave, and Stefan Tuitt um, had above 10. TJ Watt had 10.5 sacks. Tuitt had 7. Interceptions for Devin Bush, Tyler Medikevich, Micah Fitzpatrick, Terrell Edmonds, and Justin Lane. Forced fumbles, we have two for Sean Davis, which led the team, and at least one defensive touchdown. It's Tyler Medikevich. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Josh Allen wins MVP. 
What's more likely, Josh Allen winning MVP this year or Tyler Matikiewicz having a defensive touchdown? I don't know. That's actually kind of close because fluke defensive return touchdowns can happen all the time. But what if Josh Allen just airs it out and, and balls out the second like or the rest of the season and wins MVP? I think that's pretty unlikely, though. So um, Mitchell Trubisky in there, number four. I think that's the most unlikely, if I'm being honest. Checking out AFC Offensive Player of the Year, it, of course, goes to Josh Allen. No Steelers. Defensive Player of the Year is Miles Garrett. And Offensive Rookie of the Year, Marquise Brown. Deontay Johnson at two. That's unfortunate. Um, Benny Snell at five. Zach Gentry at eight. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Devin Bush. Justin Lane at number two. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Not too bad. Browns beat the Cowboys in the Super Bowl 27-21. to And... Yeah, I think I'm going to let all these guys go. Like, would Artie Burns sign? I mean, two years isn't that isn't that crazy. If he accepts this, we'll bring back Artie Burns, and he resigns. I know Steelers fan like, oh, no, more Artie Burns. <laughs> yes, it is Artie Burns o'clock all the time. Sean Davis, I mean, I would sign him to a two-year deal as well. That's not really a huge financial commitment. I'll bring down the money as well. And Sean Davis resigns. All right, so we have decent backups. Because that's what I want Artie Burns and uh, Sean Davis to be. I feel like I'm saying Artie. Artie Burns and Sean Davis to be. I cannot have them starting on a successful team, I don't think. We do have uh, no money, almost, at all. Kareem Hunt is here. This would be an interesting signing. I think Kendall Fuller would also make a lot of sense. Chris Jones. I mean, all of these players would make a lot of sense because they're good uh, Yannick Ngakwe, of course. Apparently, people are saying it's Yannick. I'm never going to call him Yannick, so you can forget about that. Um, I want Kendall Fuller. I really do, but he's also a slot cornerback. We could play him on the boundary. It doesn't really matter in simulation, uh, but we're not going to do that. We have no money anyway, so it doesn't matter. So I can't really resign anybody, or I can't sign anybody, I should say. As far as upgrades go, Devin Bush is up to an 82 now after he gets upgraded. And I guess I will see you guys for the draft. Now, right tackle is terrible. Right guard is terrible. As Well, we haven't really scouted much, but they're not really um, highly projected prospects. However, center, left guard, and left tackle is probably the most stacked I've ever seen it. Like, some of these prospects look unbelievable. Cliff Connolly, Tim Sherman. Like, Denard Wade looks pretty good, and he's not even good enough to be considered based on these top two here. At left guard, Tyler Stuber looks incredible. Javier Lopez out of Ole Miss looks pretty good as well. Like, really, really good. And at left tackle, like, Derek Martin out of Miami looks unreal. But Mike Amerson out of Tennessee also looks incredible. Maybe even better than Derek Martin. Um, so... I don't really know what to do here because we don't need offensive line too badly, but we could make it happen. We have our center. Um, we have potentially our left guard in Will Hernandez, and I don't even know what we want to do with Morky's Pouncey. I definitely want to move on from him probably and then move Frank Ragnow back to center. And I just I just don't know, man. This this class is kind of stacked. It really is. I don't I don't think that's the way that goes. It goes go B plus B plus A minus. I've never seen that before. That's a weird glitch. How many first round right outside linebackers are there? Look at these guys. What is that? That's that's six, seven? Holy. NFL draft time. I don't even know what to do in this draft. We have the sixth pick as well as uh, something else. Definitely something else. We have another pick and not just number six overall. Um, number 20, a second, a fifth, a sixth, and a seventh. I don't know what to do because there are some players like Demarcus Peterson, for example, out of Washington State. As I say, this Washington State got upset by UCLA tonight. Oh my goodness. Um, but he looks so, so, so good. Honestly, he looks like a Devin Bush clone. That's funny. Um, other than vert jump. But 5'11", 240 at middle linebacker with that type of athleticism, those type of skills look so good. He really does. I'm just... I don't really know what I want here. Darrell Clifton, or Darrell Clifton out of Florida looks quite good as well. Would be a really good receiver to add to the mix. I just don't know what I want to do here. I don't even know if... Can we trade up even? I don't think I'm going to. But we're going to see some studs to go off the board. I'll simulate one by one so you guys can see. Emmanuel Childs, only a 73, but I, I think things are about to heat up in a huge way. Demarcus Peterson was only a 73 overall as well. 
Broncos go Matthew Norman to 74. I'm expecting to see some 77s flying off quick. There's a 76 in Javier Lopez. None of the players I was really going to take got drafted. There, there goes one of them. Randy Forsett, 76 overall cornerback out of Western Michigan. And we're on the clock. I don't really know what I want to do here. There are a number of really good options. So I'm really just in between Darrell Clifton, Malcolm Harden, and Kadeem Bullard out of USC. Um, they all have different things that make them really good. I think Kadeem Bullard has great versatility. You definitely play him on the inside or the outside. Looks like a really, really good player. Malcolm Harden at Arizona State gives us another option on the defensive line, although he looks so well-balanced and so, so good. We have Cam Hayward. We have Stephon Tuitt. Now, we could change to a 4-3, as you know I love to do, and he could play on the inside, probably. He's not an outside guy, but Cam Hayward we could get away with on the edge, but we need TJ Watt to come down, which wouldn't be much of a problem. And then, like... No, that doesn't really make sense because we have we have Javon Hargrave too to go. I don't. I, he doesn't really make sense, even though I think he's really good. So it's really just between Clifton, a great wide receiver out of Florida, or Bullard, a linebacker at a USC. I think I'm going to lean towards the wide receiver, just because that's a bit more fun for this. Maybe again, like, I, I think I think they're all good players. We're going to go Darrell Clifton out of Florida. He is a 75 overall, number six in the class. We took him at number six. He's got star development. We're better, 91 speed. Um, overall, he's just a well-balanced player, good route running, good catching in general, doesn't do anything particularly um, poorly at all. So I think it's a really good addition to our receiving core. And our receiving core is probably done. And I'll go one by one if there are any amazing players. Harden was a 75. Um, Bullard was a 75. I guess it's just a really well-balanced class. I wonder who the highest overall is in this class. Probably one of the tackles, honestly. The 66 overall receiver out of South Carolina. Yeah, you know, there's some really, really bad players. Maybe the 60, dude, maybe this draft class looked a lot better than it was. The 62, it's just low overall after low overall after low overall. There goes one who's really good. A 78 overall left guard, Tyler Stuber, goes to the Eagles. I think it's going to be time to take a tackle. We're going to go Mike Amerson. Looks unreal out of Tennessee. I'm thinking that this might be the best player in the draft. Unbelievable combine. Great top three skills. And he is a 76 overall, number five in the class. We took him at 20. Also, star development or better. I really like to see that. He has 92 strength. And again, just another really, really well-balanced player. Not particularly amazing in any one category. Quite fast at 75 speed, to be fair. Um, but I, I think he's going to be a franchise caliber tackle for us. I guess we'll just simulate to the top of the second. Yo, look at this quarterback. Gary King out of Ole Miss. Looks crazy good. Great throwing ability. Unbelievable combine. He's so fat. Uh, dude, I almost have to take him. I know this is kind of like, ooh, Mason Rudolph. Ooh, cool. But like, no. Fuck Mason Rudolph. I'm going with the king. Gary King. He is a 72 overall with normal development. He's number 19 in the class, to be fair. Just uh, slightly underwhelming with normal dev. He does have 91 throw power, good throwing accuracy, 88 speed. It's a second round pick. We don't necessarily have to start him immediately over uh, Mason Rudolph, but we could. I'm also definitely going to trade up here, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the simulation. Okay, never mind. I can't. My bad. <laughs> I think there's a really good player in like the fourth round that I would have wanted to take, but uh, nope. We'll take Tyson Clancy here, backup linebacker, 61 overall. Uh, not a fantastic pick there. My entire draft board was gone, so uh, just took a shot at a player, and he was bad. I get a fourth rounder for this six six round pick though, so uh, I'll definitely take that, and I'll trade down from seven as well, um, or from the seventh round, and I will see you guys for the start of season number two. All right, let's see like, who the best overall players in this class were. Um, it was a 78. It was Tyler Stuber and then Javier Lopez, really. Okay, so I know the ratings are based on what they are in that class, not just overall. Um, so you don't have to tell me that. I am very aware. However, I thought this class would be a bit better. We didn't really see many of these guys. Matthew Murray, who I thought about, I think, for a little bit. Um, 76. It's not too bad. Derek Martin was a 76, so the same overall as Emerson, but he had normal development, so we made the right move. 
Ralph Harding, decent in the third round. Nick Taylor in the fifth is a higher overall. Not too bad. So fun fact, Morky's Pouncey, who looks like a happy sumo in this one, and I'm not saying like because he, he looks t- real fat, but his face looks like he's a sumo wrestler. Tell me I'm wrong. He looks Oh, and you know what he looks like? He looks like a, a Buddha. He looks like Buddha. Go ahead and Google that one. Um, maybe you don't have to, but he's not regressing as quickly as I might have expected. So that's a thing. Also, um, Alejandro Villanueva is going to slide over to right tackle. I would think that they'd be regressing a lot quicker than they are, but and I know they're offensive linemen, so it's kind of different um, based on regression, but usually it hits a little bit harder. I'm fine with it, though. Emerson's going to play left tackle, Villanueva at right. So what do we do with Frank Rag now at the moment? Or what do we do with him, Frank Rag, now? <laughs> it's like, oh, uh, nobody like that. It's like, oh, Bengal, you're, you're not even funny at all true i was not it was not it was not my best one okay it's not my best mason rudolph's gonna start by the way um king can st- just be our backup or maybe we'll trade him um i don't know what we're doing with pouncy and I, I we made a weird move i thought they were aggressive heavier i don't know although devin bush either got upgraded to superstar development or already had superstar either way I'm pleased with it. He won Defensive Rookie of the Year, so maybe he got it. I'm not sure. However, Makeup is Patrick did, in fact, get upgraded to Superstar. He definitely did not have that previously. So, boom. During Super Bowl week, Manko went up to, um, to Superstar. So, that is awesome. We've got three Superstar dev players on our defense now. Looking for potentially more. Um, Justin Lane's definitely going to start. We need, we need a, a cornerback really, really badly. We did not draft one. Um... The top one I wanted was not available, and my X, it's got to be so loose, man. It is, because I'm not, I'm not really even clicking it a lot, and it's, it's doing it if I just slide over it. So we, we just, we really just addressed offense in this draft. The quarterback was a weird decision. If he was really good, it, I mean, it would have paid off huge, but he's just kind of whatever. Um, so we're just going to rock out with Mason Rudolph. Clifton will stay in the slot. James Conner, of course, going to start over Jalen Samuels, even on third down. Um, he's only slightly worse. And he's a better player overall by a lot. I feel like, I feel like a Deniyi. Oh, okay. Ola Sunkanmi. A Deniyi. Another Toledo player. I feel like he's not really going to be a good rush player for us. I would rather have Cam Hayward in that spot. Dude, I swear to God, this X button is, is looser than my freaking pussy, bro. Um... <laughs> Dude, my, my parents watch some of these videos. It's sad. Don't don't regret me for saying that. Vance McDonald is the most casually 30 player I've ever seen. I had no idea he was so old. I really did. I would have put him at 27, maybe. He's 30. That's crazy. Um, I need to trade some of these contracts. They are so bad. Like, sorry, Marquise Pouncey. You've been great. You're a legend. Uh, you need to go. Marquise Pouncey, a third in a future four, gets me the number one overall projected pick from the Dolphins. Of course, we know the Dolphins love their Pounceys, and Miami as a whole does. Um, I guess Florida as a whole, they didn't go to Miami. The, the, the Twins went to Florida, so I don't know what I'm talking about there. Um, but it was a trade that needed to happen, and we got a first-round pick, so you guys know I love me some picks. Our offensive line is now, I would say, solidified. I think it's better without Marquise Pouncey. I, I, I know the overall is slightly different. I think it makes more sense long term. We're going to have to sign TJ Watt to a big deal. We just can't really afford to have these huge contracts lying around. We just we just can't because we're not going to be able to uh, bring in any playmakers. We're not going to be able to re-sign the ones that we already have. Dante Moncrief needs to go this instant. He needed to be traded yesterday. I, I, I can't trade him away. I want Don Cre- uh, Dante Moncrief bad. Um, are gone badly. I'm going to need to simulate to the regular season where teams are going to have a little bit more cap room because they're not paying all these ridiculous contracts. So we're going to go to the regular season. We're going to try to move Dante Moncrief if we can. We might not be able to, but the team is definitely moving in the right direction. Just we're not quite there yet. No one no one can afford him still. The only team with interest is the Packers, and they still cannot afford him. Um, so... I think I'm just going to cut Dante Moncrief. It doesn't really make sense to hold on to him um, unless we take a penalty for cutting him, and we would. 
it would only be 1.75. How long is his contract though? How long do I have to deal with Dante Moncrief on this team? I don't, it shouldn't be that much longer. It's one year. We'll just, we'll just keep him, you know, and he'll, he'll be on the team still. I don't want him obviously, but what can you do? What can you do? Clifton, Darrell Clifton is going to start. Um, we don't know what his development is yet. I'm, dude, if it's Superstar X Factor, you know how sick that would be? It really would be. I'm tempted to peak right now. It doesn't really matter. I'll find out anyway. It doesn't change anything. It's not like I'm playing with it. We need to improve the linebacking core badly. We also need to improve cornerback badly. Those are my two needs. Other than that, I think we're chilling. We really are. Specialist Clifton will return as well with Deontay Johnson. Now nah, let's get Clifton. More snaps. Why not? Chris Boswell's bad. I need to get rid of him. Specialist Clifton in the slot. Of course, you guys have seen all of this already. I have Cam Hayward as a rush end now. Boom. We're golden. We're cooking. Let's go ahead and see how successful this team can be here in season number two. Come on, Mason Rudolph. Lead us to the promised land, the Super Bowl, at least the playoffs. We only won five games last year. It was disgusting. Disgusting. So, free agents. Jordan Berry is one I probably want to bring back. James Conner, I would say yes. Alejandro Villanueva, I kind of have to because I didn't trade him earlier, and he's still going to be decent this year. Cam Hayward, same deal. TJ Watt, absolutely. Juju Smith-Schuster, absolutely. So we have a bunch of cap room with these guys still. We're going to be fine. We just got to bring them back. So Jordan Berry, James Conner have re-signed. Cam Hayward and Alejandro Villanueva have not. They want um, more contract time and bonus in general for Hayward. But TJ Watt, Juju Smith-Schuster, a.k.a. John Smith, are back. Weird story with that. But his, his real name it was uh, John Smith, fun fact. <laughs> Not Juju Smith-Schuster. That was uh, something that came later. We're 0-7. Oh, okay. Oh, that's no good. We didn't make the playoffs. I think it... It's not exactly a big shock to anyone. We went 4-12, and so great second half of the season. As we came back from our horrific start, I'm starting to think that Mason Rudolph is not the guy after we finished 29th in offense, although the defense didn't do too much either. 24th. We still have some holes. We're working on filling them. Story of my life, honestly. But oh my goodness, did Darrell Clifton go off. 96 catches for 1,361 yards and 17, 17 TDs as a rookie. As an anybody, that's amazing. What a year. Juju was also there. No one really else contributed at all. <laughs> Blocking. Um, you know, t too many sacks still, but better. Devin Bush had a great year as well. 119 tackles. Tackles for loss. 12 for Javon Hargrave. Sacks, we have 10 for TJ Watt. Interceptions, two for Sean Davis, two for Mike Hilton led the way. Force fumbles, we have two for Devin Bush. Uh, block kick for Terrell Edmonds, no safeties. Any defensive touchdowns? No. I don't know why I checked safeties, didn't really mean to. Yearly awards, I, I know we're going to get Offensive Rookie of the Year as Deshaun Watson wins MVP. Um, no Steelers in there. AFC Offensive Player of the Year is Deshaun Watson. Defense player of the year is J.J. Watt. Hoping to see T.J. in there, but it's Devin Bush. And T.J. Watt at number 10. Offensive rookie of the year should not be a shock. It's Darrell Clifton, who's already up to an 82. He went off. And then defensive rookie of the year is Kadeem Bullard, who we had a chance to draft, but we went with a wide receiver instead. I think we made the right decision. We didn't take anyone on defense. That's going to be the focus of this draft. And I think we're just, we're just not quite there yet. Obviously, season two was a disaster. Um, but season three, I think, is really where where we start to move in the right direction as it was a Texas Super Bowl and Houston came out on top over the Dallas Cowboys 30 to 24 what is Alejandro Villanueva down to an 80 an 82 Cam Hayward down to an 82 as well yikes ah uh, I'm gonna have to let him walk I really am Alejandro Villanueva I'll give a two-year contract to I'll up the the salary and bonus so he comes back However, Cam Hayward at 32 at defensive end, I don't want to move on from him. I really don't, but he's just regressing so hard, and it's only going to get worse. Can I really afford to pay him over 10 per year? I, I really can't. So, sorry, Cam Hayward. We got we to gotta get younger. Just has to happen. 
and we're going to be successful, I think, in year three or four, God forbid, but we have money now. We can actually sign somebody in free agency to help out this team. Darius Slay, I tried to trade for him. So am I excited to see him here? Yeah, absolutely I am. Absolutely. So we got Josh Lambeau, big kicker upgraded from Chris Boswell. We got Tack McKinley. Also went after him to improve that defense. So now we actually have two rush ends finally, or I guess edge rushers. Um, we're in a 3-4, so they're not going to be defensive ends. Tack McKinley is going to kick out to outside linebacker, which is perfectly fine. Uh, I don't know what his overall will drop to. It'll probably be in the same neighborhood. We could transition to a 4-3 now that we like, if we wanted to. It, all, it almost, by the way, now that Cam Hayward is gone, would be a better fit for us because we either replace that position or we need another linebacker. I mean, it, or two. I mean, it's the same deal either way. We still need an inside linebacker. It's just, do we need another edge? As Minka Fitzpatrick gets upgraded to superstar X-Factor development. That is wild. But if we move to a 4-3, Hargrave D-tackle, to it D-tackle, Watt comes down to play left end, McKinley plays right end. We need either, we need two off-the-ball linebackers or we need an off-the-ball linebacker and basically a D-tackle or a 3-4 end. That's what it is. Still need a cornerback. I'm going to trade Artie Burns probably. I want Justin Lane. I might draft a corner. And then offensively, Clifton had superstar development. Would have been nice if that was superstar X Factor, but superstar is still really, really good. No, he got that. So he had star development when we drafted him. He got superstar dev, which good. He won receiver of the year and offensive rookie of the year. I would hope so. He's going to go up to an 85 overall with morale. So 84 overall. And uh, show me speed. Speed would be such a cool upgrade. Probably not going to get it. It's a really, really rare one in general. Did not get it, but he is, he is a really, really good player already. He's a beast, dude. What a player. Th this is his first year up to an 85 overall with Superstar Dev. Really, really nice. Also, filling the way down to an 80. Vance McDonald down to a 79. We still have more needs, man. I don't even, I don't know that quarterback is one of them, but I don't know that it's not, if that makes sense, which it should. I'm still the number one offer, uh, uh, offer on Darius Slay. I don't really have to improve that if I don't want to, and I don't think any team's going to come in and beat me. If we don't get him, we don't get him, um, but he is still in free agency, still not signing. I'll, I'll give him more if he wants, and the Patriots are getting into the mix. Well, that can't happen, and Darius Slay accepts and becomes a member of the Pittsburgh Steelers, joining the new construction of the Steel Curtain. What an addition to the team. I absolutely love that. And now our cornerbacks are honestly kind of set. It's crazy how one player can change shit. Um, excuse the language. I don't know why I dropped uh, an S-bomb there. It's like, you fucking kidding me? Uh, Artie Burns at number four. We don't even have to trade him now. He can just be our fourth corner. We need linebacker, defensive end slash D-tackle, depending on what we want to do. Or another linebacker. Our secondary is, I mean, borderline great at this point with the addition of big play Slay. Tight end, wide receiver's fine, offensive line is fine. Ooh, this team actually got really, really good really quickly. Because we have we have only a few holes now. Alright, NFL draft time. How high are we gonna pick? Probably fairly high. Number two overall. So let me see the draft board. I don't know what the Vikings are gonna do. They always are terrible. Here is the cornerback I was thinking about getting, Demarcus James, 6'1", 186, great top three skills. Um, looks like he'll be a decent player, maybe mid to low 70s. Not bad. I don't think he'll get up to 77. Maybe 76, though. Desmond Silver looks really, really good as well. Probably the better cornerback of the bunch, if I'm honest. What about Ali Love? I guess Ali Love, he looks all right. Ooh, Jelani Ginn. He is 23, but wow. He looks really, really good. High man coverage. I don't even know what his own would be, but his combine was crazy. Definitely somebody to consider. Also, I love this this safety, Connor Cochran out of Georgia. I know it's not our biggest need, but they both look like really, really good players. So sometimes you got to go BPA. Oh, Ben Alston at LSU? Yo, what is his CB class? Jonathan Murphy at Iowa State also looks great. This dude looks like an absolute wall on the defensive line <laughs> um My myron norman out of notre dame it looks all right uh -oh. all right vikings take a number one overall 
Demarcus James, cornerback at SMU, 75. So that, that's mid to low 70s, kind of right where we put him. And um, I'm going to go with a safety here. I'm going to move Terrell Edmonds to inside linebacker. Now, do I want Connor Cochran so we can lay down the cock? Rin. Or do I want Jelani Ginn? They both look quite good. Who do I want more? Do I want the combine freak who's maybe a little bit worse skill-wise? Or do I want the guy who is still a good athlete but has better top three skills and is more of a positional fit? Although Jelani Ginn is bigger in every way. This is such a tough call. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean towards man coverage and strong safety. I'm going to go Jelani again. We're going to play him on that strong side. Welcome to the Pittsburgh Steelers. 78 overall, normal development. He's only the number three player in the class. I know it says number two. Usually it says number zero for the best unless they fix that. So there are two players better than him or at the same overall. And 78 is super, super high. Now he's a beast. He's already higher or the same overall as Terrell Evans. He's going to play inside linebacker. Now he could also play inside linebacker. Immense speed. 95 acceleration is a joke. No block shed. He's not going to play. He's not going to play linebacker, but really interesting pick. Now I am excited to see like what Connor Cochran is and what some of these other players are in this class because there goes Silver, 78. I mean, you knew he was going to be a beast. I want to see Connor Cochran. What is his overall? 77 out of George. So he's really good, too. There goes Jonathan Murphy, another great cornerback. There goes another 78. What is going on? So many good players back-to-back, -back, and then the Cardinals go, we're the Cardinals. We'll help you out. They can take a 69 overall. CB, nice. Aaron Tharp. It's like he was trying to write Thorpe and kind of had a typo even though the O is not even close to the A. I almost want to take Ben Austin, man. We don't need a cornerback. I didn't mean to. My X button, dude. Oh, my dude. I've been saying this the entire rebuild. You guys know that's not just a fluke. Well, it is. He has hidden development, 75 overall. So he's good. The number 12 player in the class, we take him at 13. Probably wouldn't have been my pick, though. Probably not. <laughs> Um, would I have taken Rashad Beasley? I mean, we don't really need him. It probably would have been a defensive tackle. Um, so we'd have scrolled down a bit. Don't need a running back. Might have been a keel wall. Probably would have been a keel wall. Artie Burns and a future three gets me a first round pick number 22 overall from the... Kansas City Chiefs. So the Chiefs get themselves a first round cornerback. That's a no brainer, right? Uh, we're actually going to take a keel wall, so uh, I can. I'm not going to make that joke again. But he looks like a really good player, so I want to have him on my defensive line. He's a 76 overall with star or better development. Number seven in the class. We took him at 22. I don't mind that at all. Now, is there an 80 lurking somewhere in this class, or were the top two just tied at 78? I think they were just tied. I think we talked. So we saw two 78s, right? Never mind. Um, but yeah, pretty pretty decent draft class. Not a bad pick from us either. So you guys know, Gene Dangus, I got to take Big Gene, and that's going to be Gene Stalker. Gene Stalker coming with the fat cock. All right, Big Gene, welcome to the team. 73 overall, normal dev, number 15 in the class, we took him at 34, was a third round projected player, but of course, I mean, we're slanging it with Gene Dangus, so um, we're going to take him a lot earlier than that. And if the other player is still available in the fourth round, I'll gladly take him. Otherwise, um, that'll be our last pick that you'll see, probably, because I'm not just going to like take random players not on my draft board, and he probably will not be on my draft board. Oh, he is. Urban Bennett. All right. Happy day. Urban Bennett, welcome to the team. 69 overall. With star or better development. Nice. Number 36 in the class. Good, great finesse moves, good strength, decent speed at 77. We took him at 98, so pretty good value there. This was a really, really good draft for me, and I'm, dude, I need a new PS4 controller so badly, because this X being a little bit of a loosey goose is bothering me a lot. Yeah, so we had a really, really, really good draft. We really did. Um, that was stellar for us. Now, I want to see these top two players in the class. I think they were 78 overall. So we had, uh, technically got the number one overall player by that list. So Desmond Silver, though. So he does have hidden development. He is uh, not adept in zone coverage, but can play man quite well. I want to see what his development is. Spoiler alert, you can just go to player traits. He has only star. Now we could look at mine, but I like the surprise, honestly. 
I really do, because it doesn't really matter that much. It's not like we're going to change positions. And um, who was the other one? Was it was a it was a tackle, right? It is Chris Williams out of Oklahoma State. He has normal dev. Oh, Connor Cochran is what I wanted to see. He has star or better. What is your development? Star. Ooh, I think we drafted really, really well. I think we made the right moves. Lucky day. Is this is this Tyrone Swoops? Unreal. So former Texas quarterback Tyrone Swoops has not only made the NFL. He and he was a tight end like down the stretch with Texas, but he's he's a decent-ish tight end, decently rated tight end for the Steelers. Dude, that was that's news to me. So Akeel Wall is gonna play right end. We're going to edit him, but we're not gonna not gonna see his dev because um, I think that that ruins a little bit of the surprise for me and uh, y'all as well. So defensive tackle, other one can get moved up. Oh, he is. He's fine. Okay. So the plan was to move um, Terrell Edmonds to inside linebacker and then start Ginn, who only he only had normal dev. I thought he had better. So maybe we should have taken Cochran. I don't know. I want to see what Terrell is. He's only 217. But he might be a better fit at inside linebacker than Big Gene. Than Big Gene Stalker. So maybe we'll maybe we'll try him at middle linebacker. I know that's kind of like his better role with the Steelers so far in the NFL. But we'll see. 76. Yeah, we're, we're going to play him there. I think that's a good fit. Oh, yeah, I drafted this cornerback by mistake, Ben Austin. Kind of forgot about that. Maybe Mike Hilton can play linebacker, man. He's 184, kind of built like an LB at 5'9". Maybe. We'll consider it. Hey, Bengal, you think you think it's built like a linebacker? People, people will never get it. They never get it. However, special teams, we got our kicker, we got our punter. Um, Chris Boswell can get cut. There's really no reason to have him at all. There's a penalty. Eh, we'll hold on to him. <laughs> we'll hold on to him. Specialist, though. This is what I care about. James Washington can play this slot. That's fine. Everything here is fine. Um, Tack McKinley's a rush end. TJ Watt, rush end. Stefan Tewitt, rush D tackle. Devin Bush, sub linebacker. We are, we are looking good. This is the team. You guys have seen it. We're going to spend our coach XP. We're going to simulate to the midseason mark. We're going to be good. Saying it hopefully makes it happen. That's what I'm talking. This is this is the change that we needed. We're six and one now at the midseason mark. Currently, the Ravens are actually quite competitive. The Bengals not doing so hot. I of course not a Bengals fan. Um, Bengals, your favorite team's not doing so well. Yeah, I had. Um, we only lost to the Browns, so division rival by six, six points. The games have been fairly close, but we've. Come out on top against the Browns by two, against the Broncos by three, against the Vikings by four. These are really small margins of victory, except for the Ravens, who we destroyed. 38 zip. I'm not trying to press X, dude. This X button, man. It's getting to me. It really is. I'm rattled. So David DeCastro is an impending free agent. Minka Fitzpatrick as well. Frank Ragnow, Will Hernandez, James Washington. Oh, everybody. Okay, how much money do we have? Tell me at least 95 mil. 53? Oh no, we're not in a good spot at all. David DeCastro wants more salary. That's not fun. So Mason Rudolph has been extended, as has um, James Washington, Will Hernandez, Frank Ragnow, Micah Fitzpatrick. Not yet on David DeCastro. Um, I don't know how I feel about Terrell Edmonds. Vance McDonald is whatever. We're in a tough position. For, we're approaching a tough position for cap coming up. Which, I mean, that'll happen when you build up some of these monster teams the way we've been doing. Because it costs money to bring back some of the best players ever. So we only, we're only we building up a slight window of success. Maybe like two or three years. We're not going to be able to retain everybody. However, it's playoff time. We got a first round bye. And we finished 12-4. and four, Back to winning ways in Pittsburgh. How nice is that? If you're a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, Mason Rudolph, he is the future. 13th offense. And the 28th defense? Yikes. Mason Rudolph was fantastic. James Conner had a very good year. Juju Smith-Schuster was quite good. James Washington with 12 TDs. Clifton was, you know, a big step back from his first year. Oh, my goodness. Blocking. 
fantastic. Defensively, Devin Bush, bunch of tackles. Tackles for loss. Javon Hargrave was amazing. Sacks, TJ Watt had 10 and a half, eight for two it. Interceptions, two for a handful of different players in our secondary, including the rookie Austin with two forced fumbles, two for Devin Bush and Terrell Edmonds, and at least one defensive touchdown. It was Terrell Edmonds out of Virginia Tech. I feel like I lisped on, on Edmonds there for a minute. I don't know why. Aaron Rodgers wins MVP of the 7-9 Packers. Of course he did. Uh, no Steelers in there. But AFC Offensive Player of the Year is Deshaun Watson. Mason Rudolph at number eight. Defensive Player of the Year, Telvin Smith. No Steelers. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Cornell Harris. The tight end, who uh, I considered taking, but it's a tight end. I'm not going to take him at two. And then we have one, two, three players in a row from two to four. Quick math on that one, huh? And then uh, Irvin Bennett at seven, Gene Stocker at nine. Our entire defensive rookie class was in the running for defensive rookie of the year. That's what you love to see. Okay, so this is the upgraded team for the divisional round of the playoffs. I'd love for Mason Rudolph to get a, a development upgrade. I don't think he's going to. Our receivers are looking disgusting. 88, 95, and 84, respectively. Uh, defensively, Minka is getting higher as well. Devin Bush and TJ Water going up really nicely. Akeel Wall only has star. I mean, it is good. I didn't make in a strong safety. He still like played a lot, obviously. But the team is like, oh, we need Jonathan Cyprian. And then everyone's like, no, don't do it. But he's here now, and he's starting a strong safety. Awful. Ginn is going to start a strong safety. That's entirely frustrating. That's cool, though. He had a good season anyway. Can we beat the Jaguars? I'm doing a season four no matter what, so it doesn't really matter. But please, beat the Jaguars. Advance to the conference championship. We do. 31-24. And now the eight-win Chiefs are in the conference championship. Now, should they win eight more than eight? Probably. But the fact that they had eight wins and made the playoffs and are now in the conference championship, strange. But we beat them. And oh my goodness, do we have a Super Bowl. Two of the best teams of the 2000s. Steelers were more successful than the Giants, of course. Um, but both had two Super Bowls from, from the time that both those quarterbacks were drafted in 04. Big Ben a little bit later. Eli, of course, number one overall by the Chargers and then was traded to the Giants. Um... But Giants, Steelers, man, I'm a Giants fan. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I want the Steelers to win because this is a video game, not real life. Who cares? Okay, going down to Tampa Bay. Let's go ahead and jump into this game. Watch it on Super Sim. We are an 85 overall to their 81. I guess Danny Dimes is leading the Giants to a Super Bowl. I don't mind it. <laughs> All right, off to a good start, 7-3, and we capitalize with a field goal, but the Giants answer right back, and they score again. It's 17-10 New York. Please get in the end zone. We're down by a 10-point deficit. Please stop them. 31-16, the game's over. Um, maybe I should have jumped in earlier. We lose 31-23 by 8 points. Oh my goodness, that was Mike Tomlin. Mike Tomlin is the head coach of the Giants. Oh my god. <laughs> for those asking, where, why is Mike Tomlin not your coach? As Mason Rudolph throws for 400. Dak Prescott's the Giants? I'm done with, I'm done with this game, dude. Oh my goodness, what is happening? Still got to bring back David Castro. We're doing a fourth and final season. I secretly wanted the Giants to win. Uh, everyone's going to say it. Uh. All right, David, David DeCastro has to come back. Uh, we're going to increase the salary. We'll give him another year or two. Why not? And David DeCastro, why not is an easy answer, but forget I even asked. Do I want to bring back Terrell Edmonds, an inside linebacker? For that price, yeah, I will. It's like two per year. Whatever. Terrell Edmonds returns. Um, the rest are pretty in, uh, inconsequential, I'll say bringing out the big boy words struggling to pronounce them apparently we don't have a whole lot of money what would i really even want Jair alexander another player i tried to trade for it was pretty difficult too we don't need him jj watt to pair up with tj we don't have the money but how cool would that be it really would be but we he's not gonna want that <laughs> we can't sign anybody it's it's cool we don't really need to we have all the players we need maybe a tight end dallas goddard what kind of money do you want um he's not gonna want that probably 96 total points i would bring in dallas goddard dude here's more keys bouncy down to an 82 
but make it look like I made the right choice. Please, Frank Ragnar, be at least an 82. 86. Oh, yes. What a, what a great decision. Defensively, we get any upgrades. Darius Slay went up to Superstar X Factor. That's kind of the last one I would have expected. I'm not complaining, though, of course. I mean, that's pretty cool. All right, so what am I looking to draft here? A linebacker, potentially, and a tight end. Really, tight end's the biggest need. Tight end's the biggest need by a lot. We pick at number 31. Hopefully, all the tight ends don't go off the board. Dolphins, of course, again, have their one overall pick. And um, Bo Dobbs, a Delaware State receiver. Okay. Show me a tight end. Please show me a good tight end available. Ooh, not really. <laughs> Not really. Do we take a backup running back? Okay. Six foot, 200 pounds with that unbelievable combine and great set of top three skills. Cedric Tanner might be the best player in the draft. 76 overall, number five in the class. Has star better development. Definitely going to be a really good backup running back for us. Kind of does everything really well. I'll take that. I'll take that at the end of the first. That's where you want to take a running back. End of the first anyway. So... Connor Michael. Now, two first names is like an auto, like, I don't trust you. But also, looks pretty good here. And is it worth taking him at the end of the second? Probably. That's that's a trade piece for a tight end. Connor Michael out of Florida. 71 overall. Star or better development. Hey, not too bad. Now, does he have a noodle for an arm? Yeah, sure he does. He does. But could have trade value. So I'm in. All right, defensive tackle here in like the whatever, the six or something. He's ranked at number 90 in the class. We took him at 159. His name is Richie Beard. And of course, he does have a beard. So good for, good there. Good there. There was an 81 overall player in this class. Holy cow. Harvey Florence. I looked at him. I don't want to do that. Harvey freaking Florence, dude. Stop with the X button. Now I'm trying to. It won't even do it. 6-2 at defensive end. He looks pretty good. I'm not going to lie to you. He doesn't, he doesn't look like an 81, though. Doesn't look like the best prospect I've ever seen, but here he is at an 81 with star development. I don't know. He, he doesn't look as amazing as I might have hoped. But this, this class was also really, really strong. We just didn't have a shot at any of these guys. Earliest player, or highest overall player we could have taken, we did, so I'll take it. Now, I do need to trade for a tight end. I need to trade for a tight end pretty badly. Money's just going to be a little tough, I think. Oh, I signed Dallas Goddard. I don't even need to trade for a tight end. Do we need any positions? Um, Not really, other than maybe linebacker. We're kind of set, actually. This team is kind of nasty. I might I might trade Terrell Edmonds. Where where do you keep going? Dude, this loose X button. I'm about to lose my mind. All right, so we got Stephanie Tanner at backup running back. He's a new addition to the team. Um, Kristen Michael, the running back we got out there. The quarterback, no. Uh, what's his name, Connor? Chris... George Michael, I don't know what his name is, dude. Um, this is the team for the fourth and final season. I want to get Big Gene some more playing time, but I don't, I don't see it happening. Specialist. Tanner's going to be our third down back. We'll get him involved. I think things are the way I'd like them to be. So we're going to be in a good spot. However, James Washington is not going to be our slot receiver. I'd rather have somebody like better there. So he'll, we'll, he'll play on the outside where he's not suited to play really at all. And instead, we're going to have my man Darrell Clifton at slot receiver. So I will see you guys at the um, midseason mark. How does that sound? Pretty good. Hope so. Midseason mark, we are four and three. Not that good compared to what I, what I wanted it to be. Yikes. All right, if we miss the playoffs in the final season, I'm going to be distraught. Here's our opportunity. Don't blow it. (sighs) 
Six and ten. Six and ten with an eighty-eight overall team. Mason Rudolph got star development. Tanner had superstar X Factor. Um so we had we had probably the best overall team in the NFL. And I know that doesn't always equate to success. This is the final team. We were Super Bowl team last year. It's just it's just a load of It's a load of poppycock is what it is, honestly. It's Boulder Dash. <laughs> uh, I'm a little bit frustrated there. Uh, that was obviously not the result I would have cared for. We definitely were were better than those teams. Mason Rudolph was okay. The defense never really came to play. I don't like the three four man. I don't think we're all that successful in the three four ever. This was just this was just a disappointing season. Clifton with 12 TDs, man. What a beast, Daryl or Darrell Clifton was. Any big interception numbers? Terrell Evans had four at inside linebacker. I'd like to see that. That might be the glitch. Sacks almost got no pressure. Little bit, of, little bit of a disappointing season to end things here. But um, unfortunately, we are gonna have to take no for an answer in this instance. We can't all be Ben Roethlisberger. That's gonna do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.